after like the first drive. And welcome to Zimmon Field for a Jumbo Cast broadcast of the homecoming matchup between the Cats and the Tufts Jumbos. I'm Matt Macy Phelps here with Ravi Chinsky for the second week matchup in the NESCAC. Today the Jumbos come in 1-0, and ending their 31-game losing streak. And the Bates Bobcats come in looking for their first win after falling into six. Ravi, what are going to be the keys for this game today? Keys are going to be for this game. We are now 1-0, and and that this momentum here into this game. The Jumbos had zero turnovers last game, which is uh, a very big part of this offense. And they're going to do that again here if they want to win against the Bobcats. And Bates will kick off to the Jumbos here. Mike Rando, number 20, sophomore receiver for Tufts, is the current NESCAC leader in all-purpose yards. Off his two enormous kickoff returns and a few receptions last week. And he's going to be another key to this game. If uh, they're going to want to win this game, he's going to need to perform like he did last week, getting them into uh, opposing field position on almost every kickoff that he got. And it goes to Rando. He'll field the yard line. He'll work to his left. He gets some blocks, goes down the middle. He's got two to beat, and he'll be taken down at the Tufts 38-yard line. So the Jumbo's offense will come out here with senior quarterback Jack Dahl who managed to gain over 100 yards and a touchdown last week. And once again, Rando field position on this opening drive. So it'll be first and 10 here for the Jumbos. They go up with two receivers each side. Zach Trous to Dahl's right. Green to the left. It is caught. And the receiver is brought about five yards. Nice little juke move there to give him a few extra yards there. And shotgun again with a couple tight ends. Dahl takes a snap. Handoff is to Trous. He's down the middle. He's brought down by the Bates line for a gain of about two or three yards. He'll be about two or three yards short of the first down, so it'll be Third and short here for the Jumbos early on in the first quarter. And Zach Trous had touchdowns last game. He's going to be another big part if they're going to want to look to get up early here. So third and three here for the Jumbos. Shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to his right, fires. And Jumbos looking for pass interference, but no call as the pass is incomplete intended for Greg Lanzillo. And that throw may have been a throw that wouldn't have probably been made. There is a flag on the play, so we'll see what that is. And a beautiful, almost 80 degree day here. Wonderful Zimmon Field. And they were waving away the flag, so that'll bring up fourth and short here for the Jumbos, and they're leaving the offense out. But nope, they're taking the offense off, and the punting unit will come on for the Jumbos with the ball on their own 40. So a decent gain for the Jumbos here to try to pin Bates back into poor field position. Punter Vince Falk will come on. 
kicking duties for the Jumbos, except for kickoffs. And last week, the Jumbos went fourth down almost all the time. Not risking it. He'll punt it to the right side. And it is caught and brought down immediately. And that is number 27, Mike Stearns, with a tackle on special teams. So Bates will take over at their own 18 yards. A it's always minute. nice Bates can get down the field that fast and to make a nice tackle. For zero, zero return yards. And I'm not exactly sure, but I believe Mike Stearns led the Jumbos in tackles last week as a cornerback. He certainly was around the ball. So Matt Canoni will take over the quarterback duties for Bates. Takes the snap, and he'll hand off. And that is Ivan Reese down the middle. He'll gain one or two on the play out to the 20-yard line for Bates, bringing up second and eight. This is all a little rough there on that play. Canoni getting pushed a little after he handed that ball off. Tommy Meade on the tackle for the Jumbos. Second and eight now. Bates in the shotgun. The crowd roaring for some defense. Canoni looks for a screen to the left. It is caught, looks like Sean Carroll on the reception. And he is pushed out of bounds. And a nice read by the defensive back there for Tufts to <coughs> come up on that short screen. So third and short here for the Bates Bobcats, similar to Tufts situation. Third and three, a long three yards. Bates have three running backs with Canoni. He'll take the snap, fakes the handoff, pitches on the option, and it's number 24, pushed out of bounds, short of the mark. That's Tyler Jansen, the receiver. So quite the formation there by Bates. Three running backs with Canoni in the shotguns. He's doing a very good job getting that ball out of there. He re-read that two-man blitz coming straight in for him. Yeah, that was sort of like a video game pitch there. Got it right as he was getting tackled. It, it really was. It was like Madden 14 all over again. And it will be good for a first down. So first and 10 for Bates on the, looks like, 28-yard line. And Canoni with the there. And he'll keep it himself. And he's brought down by four jumbos there. Maybe a gain of two on the play as he's out to the 30-yard line as the referee. In second and seven or eight coming up. And the PA folks confirm that it is second and eight. Now Canoni with Reese next to him. Takes a snap, looks to the right, finds a receiver, and he breaks out past the... And he's finally brought down by the safety at the Jumbo's 45-yard line. So Bates are invading Tufts territory here. And that was a lot of yards after the catch there. And Tufts cannot get those type of plays up in this game. It's a 24 yard gain on the play. Bates will take over with first and 10. Now he hands off to Reese. He's brought down for a gain of about three yards. Tommy Meade was on the tackle there. Looks like a few uh, substitutions here for Bates. None like Hamilton. We haven't seen uh, many trick plays here early. And he'll hand off to the receiver there. And he's brought down. There's a flag on the play. Mike Stearns with a great tackle in the backfield on this could Sean be a Carroll. Holding. <laughs> Excuse me if you hear my coughing. There's a, uh, a play going through Tufts right now. And I, I've fallen victim. Uh, the penalty is indeed on Bates, and it'll back them up 10 yards. Penalties playing a huge factor in last week's game against Hamilton. Hamilton had over 100 yards in penalties, including three personal fouls for 15 yards on one drive alone. So 45 yards, plus a couple other penalties on that drive. So we'll see how the referees factor into this one. Canoni looks to his left, and it's tipped and by the receiver. Mike Tomeno could not bring that in. 
So that'll bring up third and long for Bates. Third and about 16. And Bates very lucky Michael DeFeo didn't uh, sprint for that ball. That ball was tipped up quite high. So to my eye, it looks like third and 17 here. We've got 10.30 remaining in the first quarter. And Bates will really need to pick up yardage to keep their drive alive here. There are not many plays in your play that can really prepare you for a third and 16 situation. Canoni with good protection, fires down the middle. It is caught for a first down. And that is receiver Mike, uh, Mark Riley, excuse me. Good for the first down by a couple of And clearly they found a play in their playbook to go to for that one. So Bates on the 35 yard line. Bates showing they have some big, they have some physical receivers here. Not and they're moving in the no huddle. Canoni drops back, look, fires deep to the left. And it is incomplete. Sean Carroll. And he got one hand on that. And it was somewhat on target. There was a chance there for Carroll, but he could not reel, reel it, it in. in. And that was number 32, safety Michael DeFeo with the coverage for the Jumbos. The last line of defense there, keeping Carroll from the So second and 10 here for Bates out of the great Lewiston, Maine. Beautiful campus, I visited there, applied. Chose Tufts, but that's okay. Hand off to the left, and he's brought down. Mead with an amazing tackle there. Tyler Jansen on the carry. Good for a couple yards. That'll bring up third and medium yardage. Third and about seven. And you found a nice hole to go to for four yards there. <laughs> so the Tufts defense looking for their first big stop here on the day. Canoni in the shotgun. He's got Reese behind him. Two receivers out to his right. So far, Bates is converting on a third and 16 and a third and eight. Looks to the right, and it's tipped. That is quarterback a, Sebastian Rivera. And a wonderful stop there, right where they needed it. So the sophomore defensive back with a great pass defense there. And that'll bring up fourth and about six or seven yards. It's a bit far for the field goal, so they may, they're may they probably going to go for it here. Yeah, certainly fourth down territory on the 32-yard line. So Bates leaves the, the offense out there. And they are going to go. Canoni in the shotgun. The snap looks to his left. He's rushed. And he'll get off a gunslinger pass and it is caught. And oh, wonderful one-handed catch. The referee indicates by throwing his hat that the receiver stepped out of bounds. It was a great catch there. I personally thought he was in bounds from up here in the booth. So that was Mark Riley who had their a big catch for them earlier but the referees are now indicating that he stepped out of bounds, came back in, made the catch. It was a fantastic catch. And it's too bad that there aren't challenges in this league, or I'm sure Bates would be challenging that right now. Oh, unfortunately, you can't do like that. Um, that would be nice to see, but it will bring up fourth down for Bates. So, But no either good on the way, catch. I think uh, Bates should be feeling pretty nice knowing that they have a quarterback who can scramble and actually find a while he's being rushed by about three different men. Uh, Kaepernick-esque to me. Kaepernick-esque indeed. And some sort of wild... I'm not sure who that the quarterback is. Oh, excuse me. It's uh, Tufts taking over. My bad. Uh, it's Chance Brady out to the right. And he busts off a tackle or he steps out of bounds. He'll gain about five yards there. Yeah, I was looking at the, uh, the Bates defense calling their offense there. So it is Tufts. They will have second and five now. Chance Brady coming in for Zach Trouse at running back. And Dahl in the shotgun. He's got Brady behind him. Bates looking like they're going to rush, and they do. And Brady will take it up the middle. He's met by the linebackers, and he's brought down around the first down mark. We'll see what the referees indicate. Unfortunately for that bait blitz, uh, the man thought to go outside and the running back went inside and went right past him. I saw Josh Friedland on the tackle. Maybe Ryan Newsom too. And Chase Chance will go up the middle again. He's brought down by the shoulder pads. He'll gain about six yards on the play on first and 10. So that'll bring up second and short. 
about four yards to go here. Chance Brady really running the Tufts machine on offense. And he too showing he's a physical running back here. Not afraid to take this little boxing match up there in the lines. Dahl sends Fry in motion, the tight end, out to the left side. The handoff to Brady, looks to the right, throws deep, and it is over everyone. Intended target there was number 86. Well, you know what they say to quarterbacks, if you're going to miss, it's best to miss deep. So that'll bring up third and five for the Jumbos on their own 48-yard line, threatening to invade Bates' territory. Dahl takes the snap, looks to the right. Looks like he's looking again. Scrambles left. He's scrambling. He's going to keep it. He's going to have the first down as he makes it out of bounds at the Bates' 47-yard line. And a good decision there by him to uh, just pull that ball down and just go. Smart heads up play from the senior quarterback. And... Tufts still running their no huddle offense, much like Bates. Rando comes off. Looking for a handoff here. And Brady down the middle. And he's brought back. And until this Bates team doesn't find a way to stop this run, I don't see any reason why Tufts should just keep running it. Number 44, linebacker Gilbert Brown on the tackle for Bates. And Xavier Fry will come off to the sideline. So Chance Brady still providing good yardage up the middle. The crowd's getting into it now. Second and six. Dahl back to pass. Fakes to the right. Check down to the left. Bates he was looking very lucky that they didn't pick up a personal foul. What did you see on that one? I saw number 48 come out of nowhere and almost knock Dahl down. But he held him up. Okay, classy Takes play. away the personal foul. Classy. It was. If you know you're near him and you didn't get him, just keep him up. So third and six, Dahl back to pass in the shotgun. He'll scramble to the right, throws it out right, and he finds the first down, fighting for yardage. And that is Greg Lanzello for a Jumbo's first down, about 15 yards on the play. And the Jumbo's will move the chains. And very good eye there, getting out of the pocket, finding his man open, short, who picks up this first down for them. So Jack Dahl, seeing Matt Canone, Mr. Kaepernick over there, and saying, oh, okay, I'll be Cam Newton. <laughs> so Dahl in the shotgun, quick screen to the right to Rando, and Rando does not beat the defensive back, so he'll gain four or five yards on the play on first down for the Jumbos. Second and five on the Bates 22 yard line. And with Rando's speed, we know if he beat that defensive back, he was taken into the house. Dahl on the shotgun. Hand off to Brady. And he gets between the tacklers and he's brought down for a first down. So about an eight yard run there from the right side. And showing Bates that he can do it outside the tackle. Showing once again that they are really being held, they're, they're not able to hold this run very well. This Tufts running attack. And this will be Trouse to the right side. He's got a block. And he's brought down inside the five yard line. So the Jumbo is really taking it to the, the Bates right side. And they are inside the five yard line. And it'll Bates be had a second and one on about the five yard line. Dahl still in the shotgun. He's got Trouse behind him. And Tufts probably thinking touchdown here all the way. Hand off to Trouse. Looks like he'll get the first down. So Tufts will have first and goal from the yard line. And the crowd is into it. 22 remaining here in the first quarter at Zimmon Field in a gorgeous Somerville day. It's like summer in Somerville, only it's not summer anymore. Dahl with the snap, hands off to Trouse down the middle. He and bats that's it, it And Zach Trouse is in to put the Jumbos on the board over Bates. Nothing, Jumbos. 
And Tufts looking good here early, getting on the board, making it 7-0. So Zach Trous with his third touchdown on the year, I believe. Is that correct? That is correct. He did get two touchdowns last game. So the senior running back really doing his work in the red zone. And last game, the extra point was a bit of an issue with Tufts missing one, but clearly... And it is an issue again Vince. as Vince Falk misses his second extra point on the year. It will remain an issue. Referees are talking. They might bring him out. There might be a flag here. We'll see what's up. And there is a flag on Bates. And no, point. maybe it's on Tufts. Currently 6 nothing. I personally would think that there might have been a false start on this play. but uh, we'll Offsides. Offsides on, on by Bates. So Vince Falk getting a glorious to kick the extra point. And they'll move him up a little bit. 5-0-4 remaining in the first. And they can't move much closer up at this point. <laughs> so Falk looking to redeem himself. Let's hope this extra point situation clears itself out. Snap is good. Kick is a little low, but it is through the uprights. So Vince Falk after the Bates penalty on special teams and will put the Jumbos up 7 to nothing here in the first quarter over Bates. Actually got the chance to meet Zach Trous in the uh, engineering building. He was doing some work. So Zach Trous hard on, working hard on the field, working hard off the field. So that's in the classroom, yeah. And please, uh, feel free to tweet your questions to the booth. Tufts Jumbo Cast. So the Twitter handle there, at Tufts Jumbo Cast. We'll, if you uh, send us some tweets, we'll uh, answer them at halftime. Bernie Birnbaum running the halftime. And the Both Jumbos will, will kick off. will be there off. with them. Indeed, we will. And it is Zach Thomas kicking off for the Jumbos. from the 35-yard line. Down at this field, maybe I see a team that had a 31-game losing streak fluke at this point. And it's 15-yard line. And he does not have anyone to beat and except the kicker. And, and he's down he the left sideline. will get a run. And he will go almost all the way. All the, and a great he is stop. brought down at the two-yard line. Kicker Zach Thomas with the tackle. And I'm trying to find the name for you for Bates. Real quick, it looks like it's Chris Mack. And a great job there by the kicker to get down the field and stop him, but an even greater job by Bates to find those openings. So number 19, Chris Madden, getting some excellent blocks down the middle. And he will bring Bates all the way to, it looks like, the five-yard uh, A fantastic tackle by Zach Thomas to prevent the touchdown, but a more amazing return there. And Bates very deep after that wonderful return. And in the full house, full house formation, Matt Canoni will keep it. And he will try to barge his way in, but he is brought down short at the th And that is Tommy Mead. Who else on the tackle? And last week, this roughed up uh, Hamilton's quarterback. So I would be careful if I were opposing quarterbacks trying to run defense. And the full house again. Noni, shotgun, hand up. Key, uh, he's on the keeper, and he's brought down at the two-yard line. Bates showing they are not afraid of Noni here. And Patrick with the tackle there for the Jumbos, the safety. And they'll make a few defensive substitutions here, bringing on a few more big bodies for the front line. Third down. Anticipating a run right here. One yard line. And probably not the last down for Bates. They'll probably go for it on fourth. Tony with three backs behind him. He'll take it under center. He'll hand off. And they are and stopped. Ivan Reese is brought down behind the goal line. And that's linebacker Patrick Williams coming up with the tackle there. Number seven. And they are going... Does it look like they're going to go on fourth down here? It's an interesting call. They're, they're making about four substitutions, but it looks like they have their core offensive skill players out there. I see Canoni. I see Reese. 
probably just bringing on some more big bodies for the line. And I'd be careful with this play clock here. 13. It's always a factor. And it looks like they're going to go for the field goal. So Bates from their own two-yard line. And it looks like Drew Korn with the field goal attempt, and it will be good. So Bates getting on the scoreboard. 251 remaining in the first quarter. And it is tough seven, Bates three. And that is probably not what Bates was looking for, getting that deep after a wonderful giggle return. So really a, a big tackle there by Patrick Williams, linebacker on third down. And an interesting choice from Bates to go for the field goal. Of course, Hamilton really went for it on pretty much every fourth down they had last week, even some long fourth downs. I believe they had one field goal in the game, though. But overall, not but overall, getting enough field goals. No. So not enough kicks Bates. in general. Not enough. Get, we're always getting turnovers and downs. So Bates will kick off here, and they'll try to contain Mike Rando. Who hopefully doesn't have the return of the Bates returner to answer back. It is so crowded here. The fans are looking for their friends here. And the kick is off. Rando will um, bobble it, muff. and he'll fall on it. So the kick landed short of Rando. He tried to get up to it, but it hit the ground, bounced off his leg, and he uh, he jumped on it at about the 21-yard line where Tufts will take over. Smart move by Rando to just jump on that and not try anything fancy there. Yeah, so Rando not really getting the, the yardage he got last game so far. Nonetheless, still a very smart play. Avoiding the costly turnover, indeed. Dahl is in the shotgun. Looks like we're about to have a rush, but... It'll be a screen to the left. And the receiver is brought down for a gain of about two or three yards. And it looks like uh, Bates' defense are going to be playing a lot of contains because they're going to need to watch this run. They've been having problems stopping it all day. And Dahl in the no huddle. Dahl also showing he can run a bit too today. He'll go out to the right to Rando. Oh, gets past the tackler. He'll go for the first down. And he's carried out of bounds at the Tufts 39-yard line. So, and like Rando, moving the chains. The defensive back for uh, Bates was just going for the straight pick right there on that play. So Randall will come off. And had he picked that off, that would have looked very Geno-esque there. And the rush is to the right. That's Zach Trouse. He'll be brought down in the backfield for a loss of about three on the play. Maybe two. So it'll bring up second and long. And the first good stop against the run here today by Bates. Harrison Kidd, the receiver number 12, out to the right. Three receivers out to the left. Dahl looks to the right, uh, left, excuse me. That's he has some blockers, and he'll dive out of bounds for a first down. So Rando moving the chains again for the Jumbos as he gets into Bates' territory. Just adding to those all-purpose uh, yards of his, isn't he? And Rando was first team last year as a kick returner. Really the, the Devin Hester of this offense. First and ten now, one minute remaining in the first quarter. Dahl in the shotgun, sets Trous in motion. He throws to the left, and it is dropped. It looks like... Just behind him. Little miscommunication there. Yeah, Jack Cooleen there. Got a hand to it, but couldn't reel it in. Throw is outside. So that'll bring up. I'll tell you, tips like those are very dangerous uh, offenses to watch. 
So second and 10 here for the Jumbos at around the 50 yard line. Dahl, short throw to the right, that's Rando. And he's brought down for roughly no gain. So the Bates defense containing Tufts here. will bring up third and long. Rando showing those good hands, getting down there, just holding on to that ball. Rando truly doing it all for these Jumbos. Dahl in the shotgun, Trous to his right. Two receivers each side. Dahl takes a snap. Bates rushes five. Dahl throws to the left. Attempt there. It looks like Jack Cooleen is brought down before he can make the catch. So incomplete. Bring up fourth and about nine or ten. And, and Tuff sends on the punting unit. And he threw to the right man that time. Just a little uh, far for him to get. Jack Cooleen certainly one of the big receivers out on the field for Tufts. So Vince Falk to punt for the Jumbos. 13 seconds remaining in the first. The second punt on a fourth down this game after last game. All we saw were teams going on fourth down. And we got a false start here on the Jumbos. That'll back them up five yards. Bates hoping this will help them get. And the punt will go out to the left and it'll go out of, out of bounds at around the 25 yard line. No return there for Bates. Looks like Gilbert back to return. I'm not mistaken. And nobody on Bates was uh, surprisingly rushing that, uh, was rushing the punter in that play. They were getting ready to set the blocks for their uh, returner, who has shown he is pretty capable today. So Canoni in the shotgun. Different running back with him there. Making uh, a bunch of hand house. signals here. Yeah. And he will hand it off. Can't really tell who that is. He's swallowed up in a sea of brown for no gain. Looks like number 20 is on the carry there for Bates. That is James Seminella. Huff's making all the stop on stops on these run plays. Bates is going to have to take a few chances down the field. Really and spread this game out. And that'll bring up the end of the first quarter here with the Tufts Jumbos leading 7-3 to three over the base. Their own territory on offense on second down. So make sure you rejoin us for the second quarter. Um, it looks like we've got a ceremony going on right now for the back-to-back -back Division Three. NCAA champion Tufts Jumbo softball team. Uh, team, I mean, doing back to back in any sport is amazing. On the other side, we've got the Tufts Jumbo's men's lacrosse team who won second overall. Um, so, really, ton of Jumbo champions out on the field right now. And a team that is 1 0. Looking Indeed. to go 2 0. Indeed, so a whole bunch of winners out here than a winner on homecoming. The away team. Fortunately. No, the away team's good The too. away team, yeah, exactly. We like we like Bates, too. We do. I was going to say, the team out there uh, looking to win is, would you say that's women's soccer out there? I think they're down one nothing. Uh, Yeah, that does look true. Yep. They need a win, too, now. <laughs> so we're going to have a whole bunch of champions out there. So, Tufts men's lacrosse, Tufts women's softball, both 2014 NCAA champions. Jumbo pride right there. And let's not forget our uh, Tufts alumni here. They're all champions. They attended one of the best universities uh, in the country. And I apologize for not knowing his name, but Tufts diver out there who was an individual champion in diving last year. And there was also, I forget her name too, but she was a 400 meter hurdler for the women's track team who won an individual title. 
a whole bunch of jumbo champions back here for homecoming. Another round of applause there for them. And our football team's getting ready to square off again. All the other teams clearing out. <coughs> so, Bates starting the second quarter here, down four. They'll have second and nine from their own 29-yard line. And like I was saying before, I think a key for Bates here is they're going to have to take a few chances down the field. The secondary for Tufts isn't playing too far back. If these receivers just go down the field and just happen to get a little open and Canoni us in there. Will certainly be tough for Canoni. He's really a, a mixed quarterback pass and rush. That is definitely correct. As we have seen today, he And he'll hand it off to Seminella, and he is out on the tackle there. And this full house formation for Bates not doing what they hoped. Yeah, so that'll bring up third and eight from the 30-yard line. Tuss looking for another big stop. 20 on the play clock. Bates looking to their sideline. Canoni will come gun. No, it's just really important here for the Tufts uh, defensive backs to stay in their gap and just hold whatever Canoni has to offer here. Canoni will Which hand it reverse. off to the right, and it'll be for a first down. That'll be number 21 for Bates. That is cool. And a 16-yard run on the play on the reverse there. And the first signs of uh, success from their full house. So their playbook doing a little magic. And they'll be at the Bates 46-yard line. 14 remaining here. Bates generally showing here today on third. They got what it takes. Converting on a third and 16, third and eight. And only with the keeper, he'll pitch it out. And the tackle is made by a whole bunch of jumbos. We're gaining one or two. And the running back is number 21 again, McCoy Nickel. So second and still long here for Bates. You could almost say he was taken down by a zoo. <laughs> I see an interesting fan here in the stands with a, uh, a Bates hat and a Tufts t-shirt. So I'd like to know the story behind that sometime. I'll... There are a few interesting fans out there. And Canoni sets a running back in motion, throws a screen to the left. He'll make it, and he's brought down on the far sideline. And that'll bring up a five for Bates. A good Bates. stop there by Tufts. So. Canoni not really throwing this ball, taking many chances. Yeah, Bates looking for the short yardage plays. 12.30 left in the quarter. Canoni takes a snap, goes short to the left. It's caught and brought down on the tackle. He tackles Mark Riley for no A textbook tackle right there, giving him no yards after that catch. So Stern showing why he's the leading tackler for the Jumbos. Fourth and five here. And Bates will punt away to the dangerous Mike Rando. So David Curry with the punt. It's a high catches it. It's almost blocked. In a line drive. Smart kick there. So barely gets it away. It'll drop to the Tufts 24 yard line. 
So almost a disaster on special teams for Bates there. But Tufts will take over on their own 24-yard line. A smart move just kicking that right out of the... Look at the, uh, the man of the hour here. The Bates hat and the Tufts t-shirt. He's blowing up the, the thunder stick that say, Go Jumbos. We'll get you back to the game action here, but interesting story there. I can imagine. Maybe he has like a son and a daughter, one who goes to Tufts and one who goes to uh, Bates. So Dahl with the handoff to Brady up the middle. He'll gain six down. He looks a little too young to be a father to me. He looks like he's in his 20s. Maybe he's a grad student at Tufts. I don't know. And he went, went to, to Bates, Bates for undergrad? Very possible. Maybe. I had a, a teacher in high school who went to Bowdoin, played hockey there, and then got his teaching degree at Tufts. So, uh, Handoff to Brady. He's brought down one yard, maybe none, on the play. And the tackle there, Sam Hundley, the defensive end for Bates. And just comparing, if you look on the outside, uh, cornerback for Bates, number six, uh, a little outsized there on the wide out. So third and four, Dahl on the shotgun. He looks, and his Jacqueline is up the middle. So indeed, a good, a good point out there by, by Ravi. The, uh, the, low, the smaller defensive back got beat by a huge Jack Colleen there for a Tufts Jumbo's first down. And these are the type of matchups they're going to need to keep exploiting all day. So Dahl to Colleen and the Bows have a first down on their own 46-yard line. Surprised if they threw another slant play to him again. So Dahl on the shotgun looks to his right. He'll... Late decide to hand off, and there's a, there's flag, a flag in the backfield, the probably for a hold. So, Brady on the, the hand gains about four yards, but it'll come back. And usually when you see a hole that big for a running back, you know something, either those, def either those offensive linemen are doing a very good job or there was a hole there. And they will be brought back ten yards, so it'll be first and very long. Ten minutes remaining here. Crowd really picking up. People are going to the Jumbo Carnival. People are coming to the stands. People are watching the soccer game. Dahl on the shotgun. Looks to his left. Throws it to Rando. With a good and catch. A He'll bring out to the sideline. And a good spin move there by Rando too. So a gain of maybe five yards there. We'll call it six. That'll bring up second and 14. <coughs> oh, and they are giving out free Fan the Fire t-shirts. I might want to head down there. Jack Dahl on the shotgun. Takes a snap. Looks deep. He scrambles to his right. The rush getting at him. And he'll fire it to Rando, and Rando will drop it. Had the yardage for the first down, but couldn't reel it in. So incomplete, that'll bring up third and long. And good job there by Dalla. Head up and look for an open man. And a pretty good throw. Rando could have come up with that. So third and very long here for the Bows. Jack Dahl from his own 43, 42 yard line. And in the nickel, there's a little unfavorable matchup there for Rando. Dahl scrambles right. He'll throw one deep. It is caught by the sideline. Was he in bounds? And he looks like and he, he was. <laughs> so an amazing catch there. It looks like Gran Greg Lanzillo making the play. His feet in bounds on the Bates sideline. And great awareness there but, to be able to do that. But it will come back probably for a jumbo hold. Fortunately, a, an amazing play by Dahl and Lanzillo is brought back. The Jumbo's last home. game were not a very heavily uh, penalized team here. Getting up a few holds in this game already. So this will bring them back on 32-yard line. We have a deep yardage situation. It looks like about third and 24, I want to call it. It's only one safety in the... And there is a timeout on the field. 
by Bates, interestingly, on third and 24. They probably want to make sure that they don't allow this first down. Yeah, that would be embarrassing. Well, yeah, so tweet, our, tweet your questions to at Tufts Jumbo Cast, and we will answer them at halftime. Whatever you want to talk about, homecoming, the, the game, the, uh, the huge connections here. Um, <laughs> seven to three, so far an interesting one. 8.42 remaining in the second quarter. Jumbo's on top of Bates. And we've seen it all. We've seen some, uh, some good special teams with the Bates kickoff return, some good defense with the goal line stops to force a field goal. We have. And we've seen some big catches here. We've seen a third and 16 converted here. You don't say you get to see that every day. So some good NESCAC football here on a beautiful Saturday homecoming afternoon. And Tufts will at least look to advance the ball, probably for a punt. Zach Trous in the back. The three receivers out to the left. Dahl takes the snap, looks to the left, fakes. Throws a check down to Trous on the right. He'll bounce to the sideline, and he's brought down. Almost back to where they originally started this drive. Yeah, gain of about... 16 on the play. 15, maybe. And a flag <coughs> on the field. So. Another defensive holding? Or an offensive holding? Sorry. We'll see where they spot it, but the Jumbos are backing up. Moving. Yeah, another hold. So Would this Jumbos be three holds in a row? Indeed. Here? So Jumbos getting backed up 30 yards in penalties on this drive. And it'll be third and 34. So reminiscent of Hamilton's penalties last week. Jumbos with third and a mile. Jumbos are going to have to play a little more disciplined here. Third and 32. And play to Trouse. He'll bounce off a tackler. And he's brought down by the linebackers. So a short gain on the play, but fourth and very long nonetheless. And I and see Blue Men group. Uh, yeah, a few skin suits down there. So everyone's getting into it, but uh, Tufts will have to punt it away here. I can only on imagine how hot people in that kind of suit would have to be at this time. So Vince Falk to punt it away for the Jumbos. And high snap. Another high to catch. And the punt will go right to the returner. And he's brought down at the Bates 33-yard line. Looks like Mike Stern's on the tackle there. Not and much on that return, but uh, they have some they have good field position here to start this drive off. Indeed. So linebacker Gilbert Brown doing most of the return work for Bates here. Interesting choice in personnel. And Bates will come out with first and ten with half of the second quarter remaining. Seven to three Jumbos. And on that, uh, that's on that punt, very good blocks by uh, Tufts to make it so that they don't get their own uh, punt block. And the run is to the right. And the runner is brought out at around the first down marker. He'll have the first and out of nice bounds. nice cutback to get that first. So the rusher there was number three, Frank Williams for Bates. And he'll move the chains out to the 45-yard line. And the handoff will be to 23. And he's brought down for no gain. So Sean on the run for no gain. Second and 10, Bates. And again, Bates sticking to this run game for the most part. And it sounded like... Mike DeFeo in on the tackle there. I'd like to see the ratio of uh, pass to rush plays from Bates. I'd say like a good 90, 80% of these would be runs. A little old school football, but Canoni will throw deep to the left. Mm. He's got a receiver. It is complete. Mark Riley in for the touchdown. Matt Canoni finds Mark Riley for a deep 
55 yard touchdown pass. And Bates takes the lead nine to seven with the extra point to come. I guess all those runs finally paid off. Tufts uh, moving up a little too much there. So Bates with the first big strike of the game taking the lead. And Drew Korn will come on for the extra point for Bates. 55 yard hookup there from Canoni to Riley. Snap is down, kick is low. It's, and Bates will take a seven lead here over the Jumbos with 6.24 remaining in the second quarter. And that is a huge momentum shifter here. The crowd seemed to kind of just settle down and uh, they took a lead. And you didn't really get those kind of big touchdown plays in last week's win over Hamilton, but you certainly saw a ton of tons of over the last season as Tufts failed to get a win. So the return unit will come on for the Jumbos. Brady and Rando in the backfield returning, as well as Ben Berry. See if they give Tufts the opportunity to take a nice 55 yard uh, pass chance down the field. And I did see quarterback Alex Snyder warming up on the sideline. Perhaps they'll look to use him. Or they could stick with Jack Dahl. Dahl looking pretty good in this game. Really see a need to substitute him just yet. So the kick is off. And it is field at the 15 yard line and Tufts with a pitch play. And getting I thrown down. I believe that was Rando who it was pitched to. Barry caught it initially. And Rando is brought down at around the 30 yard line. Tough showing right there who they believe their true uh, kick return man is. Mike Rando. So Dahl out in the shotgun. And one safety for Bates. Looking like they're not playing the deep ball here. And he'll throw to the left. It is Barry on the catch. And a very good nation for that type of play. So he's tackled for a gain of one. Number four on the tackle for Bates. That is Trevor Lyons with a good play. on second and nine. And he'll throw a quick one to Barry, but it is incomplete. Coverage there from Mark Upton, the linebacker. And they seem to be picking on him quite a lot today. The Jumbo's with third and long, 5.43 remaining in the half. Down. Converting here is going to be very big, or Bates is going to continue to take momentum on their side. Now they got him stopped on defense, and they had their number in offense. Bates looking for a stop, and Tufts looking for a first. Dahl looks deep. He throws deep to the right side, to the right side, and it is incomplete, intended for Mike Rando. So to bring up fourth and long, and Tufts will punt again. And he looked to match that home run ball. So Vince Falk will trot out onto the field. And who do we back for Bates? Constantly changing it up. It's always nice when you have a few people who can return punts for you on special teams. I want to say it's number seven, which would be Alec Montes de Oca. Oh, no, it's number six. I'll find you a name for that. He fields it at the 25. And I'll bring it to his right side. And he's chased out of bounds. And a personal foul there by Tufts for and, a late hit. And a very, I, I will straight up say that is a bad call by the referee. Because the Tufts player made contact with him, but clearly shored up, held the player, and clearly did not intend to make a hit. I got to say, I may disagree with you there. I saw him leaning to go out of bounds. He had both his feet out of bounds, and he took a hit. 
So indeed, they will call a personal foul. It was Mike Kelleher on the return. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, but as the crowd will tell you, they don't very, like the very poor call there. I try not to be partial, but from a live that was the referees trying to be too much of a referee <laughs> in the play football. So, Canoni will take over in Tufts territory. He'll keep it. He'll pitch it. And the runner is pushed out at the Tufts 45-yard line. And the rusher there is Tyler Jansen on the pitch from Canoni. And that's what this tough offense allows you to do. You can fake a little handoff, get a little pitch here, there, or even take it yourself. And Garrett Iwanowski was in on the tackle there for the Jumbos. Right now, Bates is clicking on all cylinders. They got the refs, they got their offense, they have their defense. So the handoff there is to Nichols, and he's spun around. And, and a great block by the Bates. Iwanowski with the tackle again. Tufts looking to make a huge stop right here and get this ball back. So McCoy Nickel on the rush there. That'll bring up third and three to go on the Tufts 42 yard line. Four and a half remaining. So Canoni sets a man in motion. He'll go to his left. And he will take it himself. And he is hit hard by the linebacker right around the first down mark. And it looks like he will have the first down. And you better believe it. If you're a quarterback trying to take a nice run down the middle, you know you're going to get hit hard. So Bates will move the chains here. The way he's taking chances running all day, he's showing he's a rugged guy. And the crowd trying to get back into this one. Now only to his left, he'll pitch it. And the runner will go out of bounds for a couple yards gain. That's Tyler Jansen. I tell you, Matt, how many times we've used the uh, phrase pitch already? You think we're at a baseball game. Yeah, it certainly looks like a Georgia Tech or a Navy offense here. Old school football from Bates. Not much of the forward pass. But their touchdown, a deep strike down the left sideline. Well... These two teams did have their first game in 1875, so I mean, you're not talking real old. And Canoni will look deep down the left again. And it is McCoy Nickel down the left sideline for about a 30 yard gain. He'll break inside the 10 yard line. So Canoni to Nickel there. And Bates are threatening for another touchdown. Three minutes and 14 seconds remaining. Looks like someone's called timeout. It is probably Tufts. So their first timeout on the to half. slow down this Bates offense that is just driving down this field. So Canoni to nickel there, and they are really picking on the left sideline for Tufts. So we'll have first and goal from the nine yard line coming up. And remember to tweet your questions to us in the booth. Tweet at Tufts JumboCast and we'll try to answer them at halftime. Share us your thoughts, concerns, questions, and we'll get back to you. What you do is if you're a coach in this game right now. Well, what team am I coaching? That's a good question. Right now, if you're Tufts, what do you do to stop this drive by Bates? I think you have to drop a few more in coverage. You have to chance it with your front line on the run, but you got to cover these receivers. These receivers are showing that they can get it done. So 3.13 remaining. Bates inside the 10-yard line. Oh, and they have first and goal. And the handoff is to Nickel. He'll bounce down the right side. He'll bring it back. And he's brought down at around the six-yard line. Gain of three. Looking to take the corner. Knew he couldn't do it. He cut back for a few extra yards. Smart run there. Over Tufts, I may think about looking to that left side. It's a bit open because they're starting more towards the right. And 
I didn't realize this before, but uh, Canoni looks like he has a little tape wrapped around that left knee of his. And Bates will take a timeout here, their second of the half. 2.29 remaining in the quarter. Just getting their composure here for this drop. They score here, they make it uh, two. Uh, me to a close here. Tufts looking to make two good stops, maybe three. If we keep this a uh, field goal or just a one possession game, Bates looking to make it more than that. And the offense will trot back on. A little soccer update. Tufts uh, women's soccer, I think, down here 2 nothing. So they lost 2 nothing. Looks like the men are starting to warm up, and they'll face Amherst in a battle of top NESCAC op opponents. So you should watch that one. Canoni, with a man in motion, he'll throw to the left on a screen. He's got Nickel, and Nickel's into the end zone. So McCoy Nickel adding to his catch. With a touchdown, and Bates will take a 16 to 7 lead over the Jumbos with and two a and a half remaining. And it looks like there might be a flag on the field. Yeah, they might be bringing it back. So, like I was telling you earlier, Matt, that left side, when it's that open, somebody better. The ref will talk to Tufts coach Savetti there. Need to explain to him what's going on. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Bates. On Bates. Was it against a cheer but on a touchdown? Uh? So it was after the play, and it will be assessed on the kickoff. So they'll kick the extra point. The touchdown from which Canoni to Nickel is good. Which so means Bates that it probably was on his little cheer in the end. Potentially, and yes. And had a few uh, words for Tufts in the end. Indeed. So the kick is low, but it is good. And Bates will take a 10-point lead here, 17-7 to over the Jumbos with 2.24 remaining in the first half. Tufts was fired up on that extra point right there. I don't know if you saw, but they brought a man from the outside ready to just rush that kicker. All the points are very necessary here. And uh, a quick shot at the, the soccer scoreboard showing uh, Tufts lost to in the women's game. But the men will face Amherst in about a half hour. And I wish I could watch that game. Hopefully I'll catch the second half. But maybe keep you updated a little with those scores. Yeah, a couple of the top programs in D3 right there. Tufts and Amherst in soccer. So certainly one to watch. And both types of footballs playing back to back yes, here. Yes, football and football. It looks like they've run out of free shirts. It's too bad. It's all right. We're getting our own Jumbo Cash shirts eventually. So We are. You're right. It'll be all worth it once that happens. So Bates kicking off from their own 20-yard line after the unsportsmanlike penalty after the touchdown catch. I almost want to scream to some of these fans, don't leave. It's Mike Rando. <laughs> Mike Rando back on his own 25-yard line, and he'll have to come up. He'll catch it at the 35. He actually bobbles it. And he manages to pick it up. He'll be brought down at around the 31-yard line. So Mike Rando muffing two kicks here today. Very uh, different from his first week performance. And somebody's down for Tufts. And I hope, and Tufts better hope that's not Mike Rando. And he'll come up slowly. It looks like and it could be a knee. So Rando standing up here, talking to the trainer. Now Tufts playing, uh, looking quite the way they did a week ago here. You know, a bunch of penalties. Even for that matter, the first quarter. They were driving in the... And Mike Rando off the field. 
Huffs needs to be a little worried it's not on his own power. Yeah, he's brought off here. Tufts is going to, more importantly, need to find someone who could substitute Rando's abilities. Justin Roberts there giving him a hand. That's my boy there. Number 66. Right tackle. Nice shout out there out by you. Yeah. Justin is uh, quite the person. He's an amazing artist, actually. You should check out his work. Uh, so Jack Dahl in the shotgun. He'll look to the left. Fires quick. Colleen will try to get to it. It was tipped by the defensive end. So Tufts avoiding an interception there. 2.16 remaining in the half. That was almost a jump ball. Tufts should be pretty happy that nothing happened bad with that ball. Tufts rhythm here. Any type of rhythm. Dahl and the shotgun looks to the right, and the pass is to no one. There is a... A mix-up, and there is a flag as Greg Lanzillo was hit hard down the middle. And I believe that is linebacker Mark Upton who hit him. Uh, I'm not sure I'm why that's a penalty. I'm wondering if that's yeah. a personal foul against Bates, actually. I'm wondering. I mean, it was a hard hit. It was hit a late hit. On a, a receiver who wasn't really seeing it coming. But the pass was sort of intended in that area. Personally, I don't have a problem with that play by the defense. So I don't either, but maybe they want to go against the other call that they might have felt was bad against Tufts earlier. Uh, maybe, maybe they heard me. They got my memo. Maybe they did. So a personal foul will yeah. give the down here. All these, these fouls, right? I almost feel like I could be a referee for these guys. Of course, I wouldn't want that. Refs are some of the more uh, disliked people on the field. Yeah, I mean, you have to have real thick skin to be a referee. I've, I've refereed a lot of and you just got to take it. That but, That is true. But hey, it's not like the refs are trying to favor anyone. They don't care. And Tufts called for a penalty as Ben Berry was set in motion. Probably probably a little false, a little false start there. Yeah. Illegal procedure there. Illegal procedure, yeah. So first and 15 from the 41 for the Jumbos. 2-12 remaining. I notice in football there's some plays that like illegal procedure and false start. They're just so similar. Or like encroachment and uh, offsides. Dahl is brought down for the sack. Number 92. That is the first sack of this game, I believe. Indeed. I'll get you that number there real soon. That is Tucker with the sack. Unfortunately, that was my boy who was covering him. So I'll have to get on him for that one. But well, don't get on them too hard. <laughs> so the Jumbos are brought back for about second and 17. Tufts creating a lot of problems for himself here with these penalties. They could be closing in on a good 60, 60 yards of penalties right there. So handoff to Trouse. He'll bounce out to the right. Miss another tackler. And he stays on his feet. And Zach Trouse. Breaking through three tackles for the first down for the Jumbos. 19-yard run by the senior running back. And a big gain on yards and a good way to start getting momentum. Late in the first half, 118 to go. So Dahl, deep. He'll dish it down to Trous. He's brought down. So Bates getting in their tackles there, but on the previous play, they just lack the strength to bring them down. I've been to the Bates Dining Hall. They've got meat there, but looks like the Bates players aren't eating enough. They they need to get their tackles in order. Dahl back to pass. Looks to the left. And he finds his man. That is Ben Berry for another first down. And a good move to get out of bounds there, too. Not much else to go, but still a good move. So Ben Berry for about 11 or 12 yards there. And the Jumbos are down to the Bates 30-yard line. Tufts looking to score here. Chance Brady is in at running back for Zach Krause. Barry set in motion. And a quick throw down to him. He'll break out to the right side, cut it back. He is tackled for a gain of about six on the play. I want to say that's number 39 in on the tackle for Bates. Tufts' coach may uh, want to talk to him about getting out of bounds because there's 36 seconds left on this clock. 
and they have to use a timeout here. So 38 seconds remaining in the half. Jumbo is at the 25-yard line. And make sure you stay tuned for our halftime show with Bernie Birnbaum. We're going to be answering your tweets if you've sent them to at Tufts Jumbo Cast. Um, and he'll have some interesting tidbits. Um, so 38 seconds remaining. Bates leading by 10. And I'm sure one of the first people we'd be interviewing during this halftime show is the man who is still there wearing his stuff. I'd certainly love to have him up in the booth. Interesting story there. I don't know who he's truly rooting for deep in his heart. Maybe we should try to find someone to try to get his attention. <laughs> Bring him up here. So the offense back on five. Jack Dahl with Chance Brady in the backfield. Greg Lenzello out to the right. Three receivers out to the left. Dahl takes the snap. Throws to the left. He finds Berry. And Barry gets a first down, and he'll be inside the Bates 15-yard line. And Bates doing some smart tackling, keeping them in bounds. Gain of about 13 on the play. Dahl takes a quick seconds. snap in the hurry up. Looking for the end zone. Finds his man! And it looks like that's Ben Barry. So Jack Dahl to Ben Barry in the end zone for the touchdown. And Ben Barry getting three consecutive catches on that drive. So Barry leading the offense here, and that'll bring it up to 13 points for the Jumbos as they look to convert on the extra point. We'll see what the flag is here. Might have been a late hit. On the absence of Randa, you're gonna need someone to replace his skill set. And Tufts will ask to enforce the penalty on the kickoff. Vince Falk out for the extra point. Who's speaking of Rando, does not have his helmet on. And it looks like he doesn't have one of his shoes on either. It's potentially a foot injury there. Or an ankle. Snap is down. Falk is no good. He is wide to the right. And has used to have his trouble with these extra points before getting very lucky. And now unable to convert here. So Vince Falk, two for four on the year on extra points. And really one for three on the day, but one for two officially. One for two officially, yeah. So struggles in the kicking game, and Tufts will trail 17 to 13. And they are now, it's still a two possession game here. Well, now it's a one possession game, but it, they missed. Okay, my math was a little off. I'm sorry about that. That's still need a touchdown. You still do, exactly. So a field goal doesn't do it. That's. So Tufts will kick off from the 50-yard line after the 15-yard penalty. Bates will have to return from deep by their end zone. But only is remaining here in the half. You have to wonder if Bates will actually really try an offense to score. Well, I think they'll just take a knee and not at this point. I think they'll go for the return. Oh, well, well, well they may Indeed, yeah. <laughs> so it is back in the end zone for a 18 seconds remaining. Bates will take over at their own 20. And let's see if they get into uh, their full house. Who knows? They could fake the knee and go deep. And go Matthew Stafford or Dan Marino <laughs> and something. something like that. Uh, but they're not. It looks like they are going for the kneel, and they don't have anybody set wide for this. And they do need They it. do take the knee, and that would be the end of this first half. So thank you for joining us here in the first half here at JumboCast. It is 17-13, Tufts over Bates. And make sure to for our halftime show with Bernie Birnbaum. And remember, if you haven't already done so, you still have a few seconds to uh, tweet to our booth. At Tufts at, JumboCast. At Tufts JumboCast. Thank you. And we will see.
afternoon and welcome to the Jumbo Cast Halftime Show. I'm Bernie Birnbaum. The Jumbos right now trailing 17-3 to the Bates Bobcats. Coming into last week, however, they had a 31-game losing streak. That all changed. Take a look. Welcome back. What a game last week. I'm here now with one of our newest JumboCast members. His name's Elliot. Elliot, why don't you tell us a little about your Yeah, thanks Bernie. My name's Elliot Cobb. I'm a junior here at Tufts. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Broncos fan and now a fan of the Tufts Jumbos. Um, I'm a sports lover. I played basketball and baseball in high school, so hopefully I'll be here commentating on some of those games and all others. I love what you guys do, and I've been a fan for quite some time, so thanks for having me aboard. Fantastic. We're very happy to have you. Now, I have to ask, this game, our viewers just saw this fantastic, fantastic game, the first win in four years. How did that feel to get your first win under your belt now as a junior. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, I've been here for three years and I've been to a lot of games, but nothing was quite as exciting as that. I mean, I was in the stands and everyone was really, really excited. Uh, all sectors of the Tufts population. I mean, you game the past couple of years, you have a handful of kids, some of them cheering, but honestly, half sarcastically, really getting into the action last week. We had kids who looked like kids from like museum school, kids from, who were in frats, kids on the lacrosse team, kids on the baseball team, kids who looked like they'd never been to a football game before, but they were just as excited. And then everyone got to rush the field afterwards. As the audience just saw, it was fabulous. I'd never been to a Tufts event like it. I've got to agree. That was one of the best moments I've had at this school, uh, not just in sports, but overall. And trailing by four, what do you think of the chances that we make it 2-0? Oh? Well, you know, Tufts has had a, a vexing I thought they came out really strong at the beginning. They were getting to the line quick on offense, uh, running good plays, and, and doing pretty well against the triple option that Bates was throwing at them. you got, you got to be a disciplined defense, and I thought they were doing an excellent job. But then after that big kickoff return by Bates sort of took away some of the Tufts' momentum, and hopefully they can bring it back in the second half. But I think Bates has, has the momentum at this point. All right, well... 
This is Elliot. Uh, welcome to the team. We'll be back in just a few minutes to answer some of your tweets. You still have a minute or two to send them in, and I'll be right back. Oh, mouse. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the JumboCast Halftime Show. I'm now here with Ravi, our color commentator, to talk about some of the tweets we've got sent in. Now, the first we got were both uh, just kind compliments. Uh, 
Alex Kutch and Lynn Rosenberg both wanted to thank us for the amazing work, so thank you, Ravi. Thank you. You're welcome. It's always a pleasure to be here, and it's always nice to hear nice things. Now, uh, Hunter Archibald wants to know, was the ref's call of excessive celebration on McCoy Nicole horrendous or just terrible? Hashtag no fun league. And it is quite, uh, their refs will call that apparently. And I didn't actually see that much ex excess re like celebration. I just saw him run around, go to the sidelines, just did a little jet thing. And I mean... I guess he wasn't really doing what Bobcats do, but he was <laughs> cheering, and I don't, I don't see what's wrong with that. So I'm going to say it was both horrendous and uh, just terrible. Uh, thank you for answering that. Uh, Mary Maisie Phelps wants to know, how do you think the Jumbos will do against Wesleyan this season? Well, as we know, Wesleyan last year was 7-1, and one, and they were very big in this NESCAC uh, division here. Now, they beat us last year 52-9, to nine, but... Uh, yeah, I was here for this that one. That was the closer. That was, and this Jumbo's team. This Jumbo's team has looked better, so I do expect better than 52 to nine this year. I will say that. Uh, and lastly, this is not sent in from a tweet, but I've got a question. Oh I really want to know about this. If the Tufts Jumbo's football team was a food group, what food group would the Tufts Jumbo's football team be, and why? If they were a food group? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, that that that's a good question. All right. You know what? I'm going to make a very... I got nothing to answer this with, but what I will say is <laughs> we are Jumbos. We're elephants, and I guess... Aren't Jumbos mostly... Like, aren't elephants mostly known to have... Usually eat peanuts? Jumbos yeah. eat peanuts, typically. Yeah, so we, we would be in that uh, peanut nut group, so you know... Legumes. Yeah, exactly. What it comes down to is we're full of protein. You know, we're tough. <laughs> That's it. That's what we are. Uh, personally... And what not, do you that, think? not that you asked, I think the, the Jumbos are sort of like vegetables. They're very good for you, very smart to have Jumbos, of course. Sometimes they're a little disappointing, but they surprise you every once in a while. Boy, are those veggies good. You've been working on that one, yeah, haven't I've you? I've thought about this I, one, I'm not going to lie. I feel you, except uh, I wonder how many of these big boys just eat vegetables. I think there's some meat involved in that diet for sure. I, I agree, maybe more like a Caesar salad. Say that. Something like that. You know, okay. Chicken, maybe. Yeah, a nice chicken Caesar salad. All right. Well, this has been the Jumbo Cast Halftime Show. Signing off now with Ravi. We'll be back with you for the second half momentarily. Jumbo's trailing 13 to 17. And thank you. Yeah, this is Ravi Chinsky. I met Elliot Cobb during the halftime show, and he will be taking over the duties of Matt for this third quarter. So, Elliot. Hey, guys, uh, listening out there, Jumbo Jumbo Nation, thanks for joining us. I'm Elliot Cobb alongside 
Stansky here. We're here in Somerville, Massachusetts at the LS Oval for the second half of Jumbo's football. Tufts 13 and the Bates Bobcats 17. The students are filtering back into the stand. Uh, going to the homecoming carnival across the way. Looks really fun over there. Rob, you want to go over and get some fried dough? I see a, I see a fried dough stand afterward. I there. would, but you know what? This this seems uh, more fun right yeah, here. Yeah, this is one of the mo most exciting games I've seen it as is. we as we see the kickoff here. A muff punt. And he has to go back to get that up oh, kickoff and he has to Wow. So a big special teams play for the Jumbos to start out the second half. They, of course, had a big muff uh, in the first half, letting Bates return a kickoff all the way down into their own five-yard line. So, And like you were saying in the halftime show, Bates did have the momentum. Do you think that out of the gates they just lost their momentum just like that? Well, we'll see. I mean, I think this, this offense is a talented bunch, and uh, as we've seen, they run the ball up the gut. That's their bread and butter. I think they're going to st stick to that. I don't think they'll be shaken, but the Tufts defense hopefully can stop them here. And another miscue for Bates coming out here, not able to make a clean play on either of their first two. Well, the, the curse of the commentator there. After I, after I just touted Bates for being a, a headstrong bunch, they've just muffed the shotgun snap. At the college level, you don't see that very often. Let's see if Tufts can capitalize. Especially right after they just muffed the kickoff. Definitely. Tufts in their base 4-3 defense. They've done well against the, the Bobcats triple option so far as the Bobcats face second and long. Pitch to the outside. Tufts is there to bring him down. And Tufts not fooled by that once again today. There have only been a handful of times where that has had some kind of success against Tufts today. Yeah, Bates has had some success throwing the ball. Uh, Matt Canone having some big plays down the left side of the field in that first half, but Tufts Tufts uh, stopping the run pretty well, I thought, in the first half, especially against this tricky triple option. A little injury report. It looks like Mike Rando's still a little out, but it looks like he might be putting his shoe back on. Yeah, Mike Rando, of course, the Tufts' talented wide receiver. Injured in the first half. Hopefully he'll come back as, as Bates completes a long pass for their first down. That's a killer for the Tufts defense, who had him second and long. Mike Rando definitely looking like he might be coming back in this game. That's what I'd like to see as a Tufts fan. <laughs> Correction, uh, no first down for Bates. They're, they're back to punt here. And they are punting from pretty deep here. And Mike Rando usually returns punts, so let's see how the backup does here. It's a long, a long driving drive. punt. Tufts gets under it and fields I, it well. It's, it's the running back. It's Zach Trous. A nice, a nice return up past the 50-yard line. Tufts takes it in. Debates territory. Zach Trous, a punt returner. Maybe they could turn him into a little wide receiver. He can do it all. He can do it all. He's like uh, Troy Brown out there for the old New England Patriots. He can do it both sides of the ball, I guess. Special teams, yeah, they've been a killer for the Tufts, Tufts Jumbos today, but that was a good return. Special teams has been an issue for both teams today, actually. Long returns by Bates. Tufts unable to kick extra points. Mm. You know, it's, it's something I feel like, you know, in practice all week, you kind of go over offense and defense. Sometimes special teams get left out. But here we see Tufts in the shotgun. Hand off to number 14, Zach Strauss. Who somehow stays. And that is a wrong call by the ref. He was not down. He was in a squat position. Hmm. And yep. a very good way to stay up on his feet. We had a good view of it from here. Z Strauss uh, having excellent balance, keeping his balance there, not going down. But a tough, a tough break for the Jumbos as they have second and 15. But give Bates being able to just fly right into the offensive line's gaps. Definitely. Yeah, second and 14. Jack Dahl out to the left side, screen pass, and a big hit out of the left side. Tufts is the gain of five. Now third and 10. Tufts has to convert on these if they're going to get back in this game. You know, Bates with their hard running style, it's got to be tough. They're, it's tough to come back against a team like that. They get the ball and then they pound the run up the middle. Bates will be looking to drain the clock here in the second half. They will be. And with those runs, if they can get it working, that that may that's not going to be difficult for them. Yeah, Tufts has to force them to pass here. But they haven't given the ball back just yet. Dahl firing out to the right side and complete for a first down to number three. A wonderful pass. And a wonderful pass there to find him right before the sidelines. Greg Lanzillo, Greg Lanzillo with the reception on the right side before stepping out of bounds. I've been really impressed with Jack Dahl today. He can make all the throws, as you just saw there, the 10-yard out. That's one of the toughest throws. Flinging it all the way out to the, to the right the side. And another 
Brady won. Colleen. And he's brought in. As we saw again, number 44 on Bates likes to really try to jump those screen passes. Yep. Fortunately, he's been coming up shorthanded all day, but he really likes jumping those guns. And it and looks like we're about to have a rush. Another screen pass out to the right side. Bobbled, but then caught by number 20, Mike Rando. He's back in the game. That's what you like to see. He's leading the nice guy. Oh, never mind, number 25. Excuse me. <laughs> he, Mike, no, Mike Rando's still on the sideline. Yeah, Mike Rando's on the sideline right now. He's at, he's at the water cooler. Mike Rando-esque, though, from the Tufts backup. I wonder well, if Somebody's going to have to step up for the Jumbos as they have a nice drive. I like the pace. They're getting to the line quickly. Tufts in the shotgun. Dahl takes it. Fakes left. Goes deep to the Going end zone. Number deep. 81. Coolini. He's got it. Tufts touchdown. Tufts takes the lead in the second half. Jack Coolini on a beautiful pass from Dahl and another flat. Maybe could, there's going to be another excessive cheering here. Could that be here. excessive celebration? Boy, we're gonna, how many tweets are we going to get for this one? Excessive celebration by the Jumbos after Bates got called on it earlier. Say what you will about the penalty. A beautiful pass from Jack Dahl right down the seam. And what sold it was the fake, wasn't it, Ravi? It really did. And it was a beautiful pass, too. It didn't. That pass was spot on, right where it needed to be. That was a collegiate level pass from Jack Dahl. That's what you want to see if you're the Jumbos. And we are going to have our all infamous extra point oh. here. Yeah, he, he. Which has been trouble all day. One now. for two on the day for the Jumbos kicker. Number now, 47, Vince Falk. He, he, however, on the first kick that he made, he actually missed a kick, but it was called back and redone. Side. Let's see how it goes here. The spot is down, and the kick is up. And it, it is good. It is good. He splits the uprights. And so that was a crucial extra point. If he didn't make that, that Bates could have taken a lead with the field goal. Definitely. Tufts now up to 17 over the Bates Bobcats. I like where this is headed for the Jumbos. I thought after the first half, Bates had momentum, but here Tufts comes, answering with a drive of their own. And the curse of the commentator, I guess, exists. I guess it does. I guess it does. Confidence in Bates coming out. I thought they looked strong. The gamut and white. These guys know how to play football, especially on the road. The Tufts crowd is, has thinned out a bit. Students are, are sitting Students down are now. Students are coming back, though. I tell you what, if I had fried dough at halftime, I'd be sitting down, too. It's the hot sun out there. I, and I'm sure they have nice cold lemonade there also. I, I, I hope so. we got to go check out that uh, carnival after the game. But first, I think it's gonna be over the Tufts Jumbos. Get there. You think it's going to be over? I hope not. If the Jumbos win, they got to keep the carnival going. They do. Even if they lose, they have to keep it open. And Tufts getting ready for a kickoff here. Moved back. They're kicking from the 20-yard line after that excessive celebration penalty. Now, I mean, on the last kickoff Tufts had in the opening kickoff of this half... Bates muffed it. Tufts looking for that again. And a line drive, same way, but this time. Yeah, picked up by number one in return. He runs into his own man and, he and then keeps spinning. Feet. He's down to the 41-yard line. So Bates with good field position after the Tufts excessive celebration penalty. And the Bobcats will take it from their own 41-yard line. I think we had a good sense up here that uh, after the other excessive uh, celebration, they were going to call this one too. As we see some of the future Jumbos down there on the sideline, those kids look like they're having a good time. And, on, and during halftime, they were actually throwing the ball around. Yeah, I saw some good spirals out of those kids. Maybe maybe uh, a future Jack Dolls there on the sideline. And one of them was actually a pretty good kicker. Kicked it right to... Uh, good kicker. Well, the Tufts are in need of a kicker. They do. Their special teams may need it. As Bates uh, has a sweep out to the left side for a gain of five. Well, one of those kids out there to kick the extra point. I think they'd uh, find the ball's a little, little bit too big for him. It's harder than it looks. It Pass is. number 47. As, no <laughs> As Bates has about second and seven here. They've been good in uh, long, long distance situations, even with running the ball. I, they converted a few third and eights with, uh, with runs in the first half. It's tough because uh, with this triple option, you got to have one man taking the quarterback, one man taking the pitch man. There's a lot of options to go to. Exactly. And number nine, Matt Canone, has been finding all of them. And Here's the pitch out to the right side. Taken down to the backfield by number seven of Tufts. What a wonderful backfield play. And Tufts seems to find him also. The triple option, this is not a type of offense you uh, tend to see all that often. Certainly not. I mean, uh, famous uh, Army, Navy, some of these uh, schools with smaller players in Division I um, using the uh, triple option to affect, but it needs 
Of course, Army and Navy has. And it needs discipline on defense especially, but Patrick Williams there, number seven for Tufts, slicing into the backfield, making the play. Number nine dropped back to pass. And as we know, he Fires has an arm. Fires over the middle. He does have a good arm, and he finds number 95. And a great job of holding on to that ball. He took a big hit from behind. A big hit on the blind side. But to no avail, Bates moves the chains. But of course, you know, these receivers know they got to catch this ball, and they know they're going to take a big hit. But they could still take a big hit. Mm. I've been I've been impressed by the receivers on both sides catching the ball over the middle as hands it off to the left side and it's strung out by Tufts. A wonderful play by number 27, the cornerback for the Tufts Jumbos. I wonder if Tufts is starting to find this offense a little predictable at this point. They're mm. kind of running the first two downs and going to the air for the third. Yeah, that's what it seems. Let's see what they do here. Bates getting the call from the sideline. The play. Lace down and yeah. nobody's uh well now we're getting set yeah this is uh that big that touchdown was huge for Tufts Bates of course if they were up would just try to run the clock down but here's a screen pass to the left side for a short again quick to the football I tell you what Mike Canone for the the Bates Bobcats he likes going to that left side he's thrown two touchdown passes to the left side and it seems uh, the left side his it's far in the game and I mean, he during the whole first half, he was uh, so he does complete his passes. And as we saw, he had a deep pass too for 50 something yards. Definitely. Canone directing traffic. He's out of the pistol here on third and long. Let's see if they pass. He rolls right. He's roll looking for a looking man. Looking right, extending the play. Downfield number 24. It's intercepted by Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams, number seven, after making a beautiful backfield stop earlier in the drive, ends it with an exclamation mark Intercept. and an interception. And he first turnover for this uh, tough team. Mm. Yeah, a clean game turnover-wise thus first far. first interception this season. Neither turnover by either team this game, but Patrick Williams changes all that. A wonderful play. Good hands from number seven. And hopefully I don't start my own curse at a commentator, but Tufts is still yet to turn it over. Yet to turn it over this season. On Let's see if they can continue that here. Swing pass out to the right. A gain of five. Bates doing a good job of gang tackling. Tufts likes to use those flats, and they need those big guys. Defensive tackles, linebackers in the middle to get out to the flat and make the play. A good job by Bates holding them to a gain of three. A little update from the football game of Amherst and Tufts. There's a tie at 0-0 there. 0-0 in the football match across the way, but here in the American football, <laughs> Tufts has the lead by three here in the third quarter. 20-17, to 17, looking to make this lead larger. And he's going to not – oh, holds on to the ball a little too long there and smartly just gets it Runs back. for the Runs first down. for the first down. Jack Dahl really can do it all. You saw him and then run for the first down. He's like a Russell Wilson out there extending plays. That's what you like to see if you're a Jumbos fan. I know last half we're comparing him to Colin Kaepernick and now Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, exactly. Good comparisons. Chance Brady in the backfield with Dahl on first down. Dahl looks to the right. and It's caught, and he's out in the open space. He's at the he's 50 going. and the 40. He makes a juke, and he's finally brought down. Bates territory at the 26-yard line, a huge gain on a pass from Jack Dahl. Tufts here making a statement in the second half. They're already up three, and they're driving again. Bates doesn't seem to have an answer. Tufts getting the call from the sideline. They'd like to speed up the pace here. Make Bates pay. They're on their heels, and they're pushing for more. Making them pay for that interception. Exactly. Swing pass out to number 28. Good blocking up front, and he splits the defenders. He's going for the end zone. He's down at the two-yard two line. line. Tufts is steamrolling the Bates Bobcats, and they're knocking at the door once again here in the second half. Could you imagine that Tufts gets their first turn? Uh, they get their they get their mm. first interception, then they get seven points off of it. Boy, Tufts is really doing a good job building their momentum on offense and defense. And looking to take a two-possession lead here, and really close to it. The tough student section is standing. They are alive and off to Brady. He's stopped by a stalwart Bates front line. And the Bates crowd not is back take excited. that from him. Now Bates is ready for that run up the middle. Let's see if Tuss has anything else in mind here. 
If I were Tufts, I'd be looking at the big number 81 receiver, Cooley, on the outside. He's a big target. Tufts goes to the run Four again. Run, and Brady. He is stopped short. Looks like he stopped again. It looks like he had a hole there, but Bates again. Closing up these holes fast. Lo closing up the gaps. Tufts now has third and goal at the one with a chance for a touchdown. Tufts does not want a field goal here, which would put them only up by six. Tufts needs six. The and crowd an chanting. extra point. And an extra point. So let's, let's wait for that, Robbie. Let's wait for the that. The crowd chanting, let's go, Jumbos. We're all in agreement here in the box. And a little roll out. A pick. Oh! Oh, misses Dole had a wide open receiver. receiver after a beautiful play fake, but he misses over the head of the receiver. And Tufts will bring out the field goal and unit, And they are going like. to have to settle for three. They're settling for three. Number 47, Vince Falk, comes out for the field goal. And a beautiful play action fake there. But oh. uh, what it comes down to is making those crossbody throws are very difficult. Definitely. Dahl rolling out to his left, not his throwing hand side, and a, and a tough throw. you got to one, but. And Dahl also place holds for kicks. Look at that. As the kick is low and, and good. good. He splits the uprights. Number 47, Vince Falk. He's starting to get on a roll here with these uh, with uh, field goals. Play extra. Definitely. Being a kicker is so much about confidence, and right now, hopefully Vince Falk can start, start to build some of that. A good kick from number 47. Here in the third quarter, five minutes remaining. And they have a six-point lead against Bobcats. Tufts is up by six, 23 to 17. The crowd, again, is on what you like to see a beautiful homecoming day atmosphere you've got the soccer game both men's and women's teams playing behind the Tufts football team here you can probably see at the top of your screen Tufts women of course losing earlier on but uh, the men are not a nil-nil as they say with Amherst it appears nil-nil indeed and these those are two apparently powerhouse uh, football teams yeah, Amherst very strong on the pitch as Tufts looks to kick off here. And another line drive. Another they line like their drive line kick. drive kickoffs. Fielded by the 10-yard line. Still churning, still churning the legs. Tufts will bring him down at the 26-yard line. A good return and a good kick, a good stop by the Tufts special teams. And a good swarm. It's all about staying in your lanes, getting men to the ball, and Tufts is able to bring him down there. And not getting blocked out, more importantly. Definitely. So here's Tufts. The Tufts defensive front. Of course, number seven, Patrick Williams, making the big plays early on. Let's see if the Tufts Jumbos can continue here. And Tufts Ford, staying quarterback back. Quarterback Canone. Looks to the left, and they've got a 10-yard completion. As you can see now, in the, earlier in the game, this Tufts uh, defense, they were keeping their men pretty close up to the line. They're moving back. Not wanting to give up that big play again. Definitely. Tufts was beat big two times in the first half by Canone, number nine, the quarterback for Bates. And here with a lead in the second half, they're moving back, rightfully so. As a face max is called on Tufts, a personal foul penalty. You cannot have those if you have a trying to guard a lead in the second half. A 15-yard penalty. Tufts absolutely being torn up by these penalties. Tufts have to stop this if they're going to hold on to this lead as Bates enters into their territory for the first time. Canone from the pistol. Sends a man in motion and hands it off. Number 76 into the backfield. The big fella making the play. You got to respect that. He must have done a swim move, sliced through the line, and made the play. Bear hug both the quarterback and running back as he was trying to make the handoff. As a matter of fact, that... As speaking of penalties from before, both of these teams have close to about 55 yards of penalties in the first half. Tufts has a little over 30 here already in this half. As Bates hands it off to the right, he's got number blockers in front. Number three, three. Room. he's out to the outside. And he's running he fast. He knocked out of bounds on the 30 yard line. By and a number good move 30 there Tufts. by the defender from Tufts to just shove him out of bounds. But a big gain from the Bates Bobcats. And here they come. So after two scoring drives to start out the first half, almost into the Tufts red zone here. Bates looking to retake their lead that they once had. Bates from the gun hand again. Off. Hands off to number 23 on the outside. Out, to the, out inside the Tufts red zone to the 15-yard line. Getting very close to that first down. 
Gain of eight for the Bobcats. Second and two. A touchdown would tie the game and could make them go ahead with the point after. Tufts looking to make them settle for three here. Nick Canone, Matt Canone, sorry, and has other ideas. The crowd is cheering for holding them and a first down. A good first down run from Canone. You know he can run it, and we've seen him pass it too. He's a dual threat. And, I'm and a Tufts player is down. Tufts is well, down. He's getting up, getting a little help from his teammates. He's up. That's a good his friends and family who uh getting up on his own power, yeah, he's walking wa off. Walking under his own power number. It's better than Rando's injury where they needed to help him off. Definitely. Speaking of Rando, Rando now has both his shoes on his helmet on, and he looks like he could be back in this game. Number 90, James Brow with the injury there coming out of the game. One of the only junior captains for the Tufts. Jumbos. They look to him for leadership. I'm sure they'll hope to have him back out here for this goal line stand. First and ten here for Bates. Looking Swing pass to out to the side. left. Number three is swallowed up by the back ball. Is the safety, Michael DeFeo, making that tackle. Bates having down the field in the first half, but throws out to the flat so far. Tough sniffing it out well. Bates looking to tie the game lead as they go from the shotgun here. A handoff faked as Canone rolls out to the right. Finds number seven. The pass is deflected. Is there going to be a flag? There is. A late flag is thrown and in. this might be pass interference. It looked like the Tufts defender got in before the ball. And actually that receiver is hurt for Bates number or seven he's for Bates. down. Either that or he's a big little hit. drama there. A big hit from the Tufts defensive back perhaps a little bit before the ball. You can't do that, Ravi. You can't get there. You can't get there before. No, you the ball. cannot. No. Tufts the Tufts defender here. thought that uh, he got his arm in there to knock that ball away, but clearly he held the receiver up a bit, and the refs did not like that. It's now first and goal. It's two yard line. And a this costly penalty as Bates now has four downs to get it into the end zone here. And puts Bates in a wonderful position to get that touchdown here. If you're Tufts, you've got to make Bates stop for three if you're going to have a lead going into the fourth quarter here. So Bates comes to the line. They have an interesting uh, three running back backfield here. They've been It's awfully confusing, I'm sure, if you're a defensive lineman for Tufts. Here's the snap. They send number 23 in motion. The snap is bobbled. It's a broken play, and Tufts forces a five-yard loss. It's now going to be second and goal. And there has been quite a lot of that this game. A lot of these... Uh misplays on the snaps. Yeah, we've seen that twice thus far. We've seen it some on the long snapping with punts. A little, some one was bobbled by Canone. And uh, some other excitement. Tough soccer just scored and made it 1-0. Hey, look Rangers. at that. 1-0, tough soccer. But here on the football field, Tough's looking to make a goal line stand after a bobble by by Canone for the Bates Bobcats. Here it is, second and seven. Look, make, look to his left. He looks to his left. He's got a man slanting, and it's off his hands. A tough, would have been a tough catch. He put it in the right spot. Only his man was going to get it. Bates receiver got it, but couldn't haul it in. And I was looking for a little flag there just to make him again. Yeah, the ref keeps the flag in his poppet. It's, po it's <laughs> his yeah. poppet. Now third and goal for the Jumbos. you got to imagine Canone's going to be looking to the left to his uh, receiver 85. He likes that left side. He does Can like just, his left side. Can Tufts make another goal line stand? They did it once in the first half, and they'll try to do it again here. Canone from the shotgun. Takes one step. Looking looks to, to his, his left, left, as we said, and throws the fade. It's a touchdown. touchdown. And a Bates wonderful scores back. a touchdown on a beautiful fade. And a wonderful over the Older catch. Mm. Good focus there by the receiver. Well, Matt Canone found his, his big receiver in the end zone. He's a big target with sure hands, and he hauled that one in. That was a beautiful play. That was a Division I style play. That was beautiful. That was. So Bowden, sorry, Bates, excuse me, going for the extra point here. We'll be versing them soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah well, Tufts will be playing them and soon. And with this point after, Bates can go up here. 
So there's a lot of actually pressure on this kicker right here. pressure on the kicker here. Let's see if they can put it through. The snap and, and the hold is down. It's a good kick, and it's good for the lead. It's through. Bates takes back the lead. So seesawing here in the second half. Tufts takes the lead. Has two touchdown drives. Tightens up before Bates taking the lead right back. Some excellent football here in Somerville. This is good to see. After years of frustration with the Tufts Jumbos, it's good to see. To play and we're seeing the scoreboard from the Tufts soccer game, Tufts 1 and Amherst 0. I saw an uh, excellent soccer game a few weeks ago as uh, pulled one out in overtime. I think they have a pretty good team this year. Hopefully they can uh, go far in the NESCAC. Actually, I'll tell you right now, Elliot, I was actually watching a little from over here, and we could see their goal, and it's quite a shot. Oh, yeah? From, from far out? It was pretty far out. It came from the crowd and just went to the... Top right corner of that goal. Mm. I always like to see those long finesse shots, a little RB on those if you're a, a fan of the FIFA soccer game. So I agree. Even if I'm not a big fan <laughs> of soccer, you still can appreciate a long kick like that. Uh, and, and here's the kickoff from Bates. 121 left here. And a little a fake pitch. Fake pitch. Zach Strauss and he slips the tackle and he's into the free. open field. He passes the 40, the he's got the kicker to beat. He passes him, he's down the side. 30, the 20, 45 is gaining on him and he slips the tackle, he's into the touchdown. So the Tufts Jumbo score on a fake lateral. On a after a kickoff bites the them in the first. Tufts scores on a kickoff immediately after a Bates touchdown. That is a killer if you're a Bates Bobcats fan. Their special teams coach has to be seething mad here as Tufts takes the lead at home. And that has got to be one of the fastest scores of this game. Maybe we'll see the season. Wow. Zach Trez running straight down. He had a beautiful fake lateral. They did a real lateral early, earlier in the game. This time they fake it. It seems like the Bates special teams kickoff unit bit and he went down the sideline for six. Loses the lead right after gaining it back. This is an exciting and game Tufts of football. Tufts is going to probably go for two Tufts here. Tufts is going for two. And it makes sense because they will be a touchdown away if they can make this. It's up five now. One point would put them up six. And seeing how Bates has been kicking extra points lately, and I'd want the extra point as well. I got to say, you know what it comes down to here? Tufts is 24 points here. They already have 29 they're doing pretty good. High scoring from the Jumbos. So Dahl expecting to get the ball back. He only has it for a two-point conversion. I'm sure he's happy about it. As expect we expect a little quarterback sneak here. I feel like Dahl has that up his sleeve. Perhaps he, he looks left on the slant. Oh. Right in the bread basket at number 81, Kuleen, but it slips through. So Tufts ends up with just six on that drive. After a wonderful kickoff return, a, a well-engineered play there, just a, a drop pass by Number 81, Jack Kuleen. Clearly, I do not have Tufts' uh, playbook because I completely called that wrong. Oh, well, maybe maybe uh, they knew that Bates would see it coming, so they decided to go for the slant. I mean, Kuleen is a big receiver and usually sure-handed. I, I would have targeted him on that play as well. And, I mean, he's a big guy. He had his uh, defensive back outsized. He, the mm. ball was it did hit him between the numbers. Mm. You got to make those type of plays if you want to be successful in these I games. I think it would take a defensive back about the size of Cam Chancellor if he was going to be as big as Jack Kuleen. He is a large receiver, and especially by NESCAC standards. So here the Jumbos are to kick off. You know, for a Denver fan, you make a lot of Seattle comparisons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I respect them, all right? They've beaten us each of the past two times we played as the Jumbos received inside the 10-yard line and taken up past the 20. Hit by the first man. Play for the tough special team. Textbook I can't tackle a returner that big up high. And he mm. hit him low, and he hit him perfectly to bring him down. The freshman Brett Phillips, that's a big play for him. You know, on a football team, you got a lot of guys, a lot of guys on special teams maybe don't get a chance to shine as much. So that's a big deal for a freshman getting out there, getting to make a play in front of this huge home crowd. And I couldn't have said that any better myself. It's always a wonderful feeling for anyone to make a play, but especially when you're a freshman. As Bates rushes out to the right side, Tufts strings it out and flag. makes a stop. There's a flag, and it may most likely be a holding. Perhaps a holding call on, on Bates, Bates as a stampede of jumbos brings Bates down. 
behind the line on the right side. I didn't see a hold, but the way they threw that flag, it very well could be. Referees are discussing this a little bit before they make their official judgment. Yeah, the call does go against Bates. And they Tuffs move will back. accept. It'll be first down and 20 inside the 15-yard line. With 54 seconds to go in this third quarter. That's right, the third quarter winding to a close as we head into the fourth. Tufts with the lead here. A big contingent of Bates fans here and an even bigger contingent of Tufts fans. This is really exciting to see the people coming out and supporting their Tufts football team who've had not, not so much to cheer about in the past, but here is a lot to cheer about as Matt Cannellan looks to the right. Treasure by Tufts and he's brought down inside the five. So after a holding penalty, Tufts sacks Matt Cannellan for another big loss. And they are really deep back in their own territory here. At about the two yard line maybe, two, three yard line. Bates has to be careful. If they get stopped here, they could be punting out of their own end zone. They have to get to the 33 yard line to get a first down. And as we saw with their punting, they almost were blocked earlier this game. Yep would be very dangerous from this spot with 12 or 10 seconds to go clock one another playoff they do it's a shovel pass inside that was dangerous number 22 of Bates caught it inside of his own goal line but then was able to take it down to the one that'll and do it for the third quarter here a, in Somerville and a third and long coming up in the fourth quarter so the teams will switch sides and they'll bring it back for one more quarter Tufts 29 Bates 24 now this is a we wild get a few, ride. Uh, extra cheers while we switch those sides. Jumbo's holding four fingers up in the air. It's fourth quarter, a quarter that they have done well so far this season. And the coaches even running. Coach excited. Even the fans. This is so great to see all these fans out here. And it, with you, my name is Elliot Cobb. I did uh, pass it on now. Back to Matt so Messi. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Elliot, for. Uh, the newest member of JumboCast. We always love our new members. Did a great job. Hi, Matt. Hey, Robbie, and a great job by Elliot there. And he uh, certainly brought some good luck for the Jumbos in the third quarter. He did. His curse of the commentator uh, really slowed up Bates at first and been a quite eventful third quarter. And Tufts gaining a five-point lead over the Bobcats, 29-24, heading into the fourth. A fabulous kick return by Zach Trous there. That was that was an absolute beautiful kick return. A little fake lateral and this that bait special teams uh, unit was pretty fooled by that. Certainly alluded back to the first half when Tufts uh, pitched to Rando on the kickoff return. We were expecting that, but they didn't see that coming. Uh, we with trust on the keeper, so I, exactly. And Rando, with his equipment on, still has this game. So Bates deep in their own territory, third and 28. They'll throw it out to the left. Uh, out to the right, excuse me. That's Mark Riley on the catch. And Matt Canone really lever as he went to him for the touchdown. He continues to go for him when uh, they are in deep situations. Of course, so be kicking from their own end zone. Yeah, so David Corey will be kicking from the back of his own end zone for Bates. Tufts and looking to probably block this punt. And back to return. That's not Mike Rando. I can't see the number, but I'm guessing it is Zach Trous after his fabulous return of the kickoff. And it is Zach Trous. Who had a wonderful kickoff return before. And looking to work that magic again and a spiraling punt. So he'll catch the low punt. He'll go to his right. He's got blockers. He's down the right sideline. He is inside the 20. Again. He's down towards the end zone. And he has it. He gets it. Into the end zone, it is a touchdown! Uh, Zach Trout, second kickoff return for a touchdown in the span of two minutes here. And, and the Tufts Jumbos will take an 11 point lead here with 14 minutes remaining. And Zach Trout should get an MVP award for this. Kickoff return for a touchdown and now this, a punt return for a touchdown. So Zach Trout's doing it all. A touchdown on the ground game, a touchdown on the kickoff return, a touchdown with the punt. Zach Trouse, number 14, the senior, doing it all for the Jumbos. He, and even catching that low punt is no easy business. So no flags on the play. Low snap. It is bobbled. And the quarterback will Dahl roll out his jack gets up Dahl. and he gets taken down. And so, the extra point uh, still causing a little 
Havoc here, but not after Dak Charles piles on some points. So the Jumbos missing an extra point, missing a two-point conversion, <clears throat> and now missing another extra point on the bobbled snap. So the Jumbos lead 35 to 24 with extra points. And you gotta For wonder, what do you think you consider leaving Trous uh, in even if uh, Mike Rando healthy? I mean, Mike Rando was the player of the game last week, but Zach Trous certainly the jumbo of the day today. And <laughs> the jumbo of the day, I like that. That should be an award. But that just goes to show you why football is a wonderful game. Anyone could be the player of the game. Indeed, and really today's game showing us that there are really three phases of football. It's not just offense and defense. It's special teams. Special. special teams doesn't have the biggest impact on most games, but when it does have an impact, it, it certainly has a huge one. And this in this game, Zach Trout on special teams has scored over a third of points on uh, this Jumbo's team on special teams. And Bates also had their very long return down to the five-yard line, so... Kickoff from Zach Thomas. It'll go back to the Bates 15 yard line. The returner is down at the Bates 25 yard line. Holding on to this momentum and just moving forward. It's early in this fourth quarter at 13.54. Bates looking to get something going. So they will take over from their own 25 yard line. 26 as the ball is spotted. McInerney back in the shotgun. He will hand it off. And it is a strip. And it's recovered by the Jumbos. Tommy Meade picking up the fumble. And after last game where they did not cause a single turnover, they now have two in this game. So Tommy Meade coming up with the instant play for the Jumbos and they will take over inside the Bates 25 yard line. That was a beautiful heads up. Uh, the strip came out and he just went. 13.54 remaining in the game. And I believe that was Ivan Reese, the ball carrier for Bates. And he had it stripped right from his hands before hitting the ground. Tommy Meade with the big recovery for the Jumbos. And this crowd going crazy here. So Jack Dahl on the shotgun, he's got Chance Brady to his right. And the handoff is to Brady, he's up the middle. He bounces through tacklers and he carries himself for a first down down to the 10 yard line. Team definitely showing a lot more confidence here than we've seen in their uh, past years. Looking like a team that really has faith in their players. And on the shotgun, no huddle, handoff to He bounces five. And he'll work his way to about the three yard line on a seven yard carry. Down to maybe the two. 13 and a half minutes remaining. Jumbo's up by 11. Second down and goal. Jack Dahl in the shotgun takes the snap. And Brady will get shut down for a small loss on the play. So the Jumbo's no huddle, really taking it to the Bates defense here. And it's been working for them today. So when you have something that's working for you, you just keep running it. And Dahl will come to the sideline here to talk with Coach. 20 seconds on the play clock, so they have a little bit of time to just talk this out, run the clock out. And three timeouts remaining. They might want to take one. Two possession game. <laughs> and Tough scores here. Timeout. It will be a little more. So the Jumbos are going to take a timeout here. 40 remaining on the clock. Jumbo's up 35-24. And the Jumbos are threatening to score again after the fumble recovery by linebacker Tommy Mead. Here could be the beginning of the end of this game. Yeah, certainly the, the fumble recovery, the, really the knockout punch, not just the turnover, but the, the field location of that. Exactly. So the red zone with the fumble recovery, that is huge. So Jumbo's really filling out the stands here. Great turnout for this event. And maybe we'll have sell tickets. Uh, we'll start selling tickets on these games. Indeed. They're I mean, getting exciting. They make money on these. Jumbo's are close to bringing their streak to and keep their offense rolling. So the offense heads back out onto the field. And while the Jumbo's are rolling here on the soccer field, they are tied 1-1.
And we told you it'd be a good matchup and certainly delivering over there on Kraft Field. This is also a pretty good matchup right here. And we have a good matchup here in the Zimmon Field. Yeah, it was a great it was a great game last year between the Jumbos and the Bobcats. Bobcats came up victorious. Yeah. Jumbos didn't put up as many points as their yardage would indicate, but Jack Dahl actually went for nearly 400 yards in that game. Jack Dahl rolls to his right, cuts back, throws over the middle, and it's caught by Jack Cooleen for a touchdown. Jack Cooleen from Jack Dahl in the back of the end zone. 12 And the remaining. reps are trying to separate their little cheer. And the Jumbos take a 41 to 24 lead, putting their foot down on this game. That is absolutely right. And you know what, if they have a foot the size like a jumbo size foot, that they really are going with that. And Vince Falk will once again try to redeem himself on with the extra this point. Extra point and a low, snap. low snap. Kick is good. And There's a flag. a flag. So we'll see what that is. But temporarily, the Jumbos lead 42 24. An and 18 a 18 point game. This and is getting close to a three possession game. Now it is a three possession game. Indeed, and the crowd's really getting into it with the Jumbo's chant. 12.33 remaining. Bates will have to uh, maybe look to the pass game on offense to try to get some quick scores in. And not just lit screen passes that they've been throwing all day. They may need to start looking deep like we know Canoni has the ability to do. Yeah, we've seen some deep passes to Mark Riley and McCoy Nickel. So maybe... Canoni and they're beautiful passes them. too, so I... I, if I'm Bates' coach right now, I trust Canoni's arm. So Zach Thomas will kick off for the Jumbos. Of course, Tufts also showing that they have defensive abilities, recovering, having an interception today. Ben Koulibaly back for the Bobcats on his own 10 yard line. Looking for a return. But the kick is to the left side. Picked up at the 15. And the returner is out to the 33 yard line. Interestingly, Bates does not try any like fake laterals on their uh, kickoff returns. Tufts knows they have uh, depth uh, returners back there, so with the lateral, you can't go wrong with either. So Bates will take over, first and 10. Bates looking to pick up a huge chunk of yards fast, but with the pitch that they and the runner will be out of bounds for no gain there. That is Sean Carroll on the pitch from Canoni. He is no, he is not out of bounds. He was tackled in bounds and the clock will keep rolling. So we'll have second and eight for the Bobcats. Canoni's still in the shotgun. He's got one wide to each side. Takes the snap. And he's Back looking down the field, and he's Throws going deep. deep. Left. And there might And that pass is to Mark Riley. So that'll bring up third down and eight with 11.49 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And an uncatchable ball thrown there. Or there might be speculation on a pass interference. There's a little hand fighting going on downfield. But way out of the reach of that receiver. Five slowly getting back there. He's become he's one of his favorite targets. And only back to pass. The rush looking, almost gets to him. He rolls to the left. Down, there's a there's flag, a flag down. on the field. And he's pushed out of bounds there by number five, 45, Tommy Mead. And it's probably a holding on Bates. And the referee does indicate a hold. Canoni had a lot of time there, so you probably could have guessed there was a little bit of a hold going on. So that'll march the Bobcats back 10 yards. The remaining. But the penalty is declined. So that'll bring up fourth down and eight for the Bobcats on a stop from the Jumbos. And they will punt and who do you know? It's number 14, Zach Trouse, and back of the jumbo 28-yard line. It's an interesting decision, a punt here. Yeah, they don't have great field position, but they're still down three scores. And they're putting Zach Trouse back there. He's looking like he's having a little problem. So the punt is away. Trouse he's going to let it bounce. bounce. 
He'll pick it up at the 20 yard line, down the right sideline, breaks a tackle, keeps going, and he's pushed out at the 26 yard line. About a 15 yard return. So 11-22 remaining. And, and the Jumbos uh, will take over with first and 10. And there's a Bobcat down on the tough sideline who's walking off. So if you think about this kick return game for Tufts, you know, starting out in the first half, Mike Rando not really getting some big returns. But then, Zach, big, that's got to be huge for the Tufts psyche. It, mu it must be because, I mean, Tufts knows that they have a valuable uh, – Valuable punt returner, kick returner, guy who could do it all in Zach Gross. Dahl will hand off. That's Chance Brady down the middle, and he'll gain about seven yards on the play. And you know, what it looks like, um, Zach Trouse, they used to start him off pretty good as a running back, but now they're using Chance Brady more as they moved uh, – Trouse to the kick return spot. So second and three here for the Jumbos. With 10.48 here in the fourth quarter. On the shotgun. Bates needs to make a few good stops here and a uh, off sides by Bates. Screen pass to Ben Berry. He breaks out for a first down. About a 10 yard game. And Jumbos will move the chains into Bates territory. Bates a little bit looking for a false start penalty there. So Tufts still going no huddle, but really taking their time here, letting the play clock expire. And at this point of the game, why shouldn't they take their sweet time to just let the clock keep going. They have a 42 to 24 lead going in close to the middle of the fourth quarter here, so. And the handoff is the chance. He'll take it up the middle, and he'll gain about seven yards again on the play. Brought down by number 48 there for Bates, Mark Upton, the linebacker. This Bates defense staying back, not looking to give it a big play, but uh, this Tufts defense being smart, running it right at him. So the Jumbos. Still winding the clock. You can probably expect another run here. Another few runs here. And just quite the sight seeing Tufts put up 42 points in the game, which you didn't see too much of last year. You didn't? Them putting up 24 points in the game was uh, quite exciting. And yet again, Dahl to Brady up the middle. He'll go for no yards. So that'll bring up third and short, about three yards to go. For the Jumbos. But another good disposal of like 30 more seconds on this clock. We'll be reaching into the eight minute mark soon. So under nine minutes to go, 15 left on the play clock and the Jumbos will come up to the ball. Jumbos looking for two and oh season. Dahl with a short pass to Berry. He'll try his way for the first down, and he'll and, have it. And he so, has it. So and Ben Berry with about a six-yard gain on the play. And a great job fighting for yards. That's what you look for in a receiver. With these short passes, you throw it short, and you hope that they can make the play happen. Ben Berry certainly coming up with some important plays for this jumbo offense today. He has. So the sophomore receivers, in addition to Jack Kuhlin, have come up big for the wideouts. We'll remain in the shotgun with Brady behind him. One thing I like about Dahl in these games are he seems to spread the ball out a lot, especially in the absence of Mike Rando. You know he's not looking to one guy only. And Brady will bust up the middle for about three on the play with a gang tackle. Now under the eight minute mark. We are reaching the halfway point of this game. I'm in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. So that'll bring up second and about six or seven yards to go. Jumbo's on the Bates 32 yard line. Dahl on the shotgun, three to his left. Takes the snap, handoff is to Brady. 
And he'll be close to the first down mark. He'll reach for it. And it seems like he's got it. Referee standing there right on the 25 yard line. Another big first down called. Fans going very excited here from that. And they will move the chains. So first and 10 for the Jumbos on the 25 yard line. Powering through. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Jumbos call number four's number again here. That would be probably a smart move. Dahl will hand do. off. Bobcats are thinking along the same wavelengths as me. They'll tackle him for about two and a half yards. Making a small gain out of pretty much no hole. Two, three yard pick up there. So second and eight here. 6.40 left on the clock. Down on this possession. You have to wonder if the Jumbos might go for a pass here to try to move the chains. A short pass maybe. Or maybe they look to hand it off again, get a little more, let's get a little closer to that first down marker. Dahl takes the snap, throws to the left. He's got Ben. He cuts back to the right. He's brought down by some linebackers and he'll gain about three yards on the play. So we're down to six minutes remaining. I'll call it third and six here to and go. The good thing for the Jumbos here is they're in a position where they don't necessarily need to make this if they don't want to. But of course they would want to try to move the chains here, score again. It's always a nice thing to pad up this lead. And I think they're really in fourth down territory here. Too close to punt, too far for a field goal. So. Too far, exactly. And the handoff is to Brady, he's down the middle. He's both busted open a seam. Tackled down inside the five yard line. And they don't need to worry about either of those here as they got the first down. So Chance Brady with 16 yards on the play. They He'll come off to the sideline. They have first and goal here to go with like 531 to play. So Chance Brady really leading this drive for the Jumbos. And Zach Trouse will come back on as running back. Looks like they want to give Zach Trouss a chance to score three touchdowns off in one game. Fourth, actually. Fourth. And he had two last week also, so Zach MVP for this Jumbos team this year. Dahl in the shotgun, Trouss to his right, three receivers to his left. He looks to the left, screen pass. And the receiver is brought down for a loss of two on the play. And that Bates like silencing Dunberry. the I believe that we will win chance. But uh, that chance should continue because I agree with them. So Ben Berry there on the reception, losing some yards. Second and goal from about the seven yard line. Clock ticking here. Little uh, hand signaling by Dahl in the play in order. Dahl in the shotgun takes the snap. Hand off is to Trouse, he busts through the middle, gets back out to the four yard line, regaining the yardage lost on the previous play. So that'll bring up third and short. So about 4-10 remaining on the clock. Third down. And Bates really need to stop here. Go, just under four minutes to play left. Crowd getting into it now. And let's go Jumbo's chant. And the people over on the soccer stands are actually turned around looking to the football game. Handoff is to Trouse. He is met by a full force of Bates there. And, and they are at fourth down. And what do you do here, Matt? Do you take the field goal and just pad this lead, or do you go for it here? I'll take the field goal, but what do you think? Well, a field goal would give you a three touchdown lead and the way the kicking game has gone today, I actually would go for the field goal because I think they need to instill some confidence back into their kicker, Vince Falk. They do. And a field goal here would be huge for him, but they're going for but it. But they're going for it here on fourth down to just pin the, well, pin Bates back deep. So Dahl in the shotgun, tries to his left, takes the snap, handoff and is to Trouse. 
And he's they will down. be stopped short. So Bates will take over on offense from their own line on the turnover on downs. And they have a long way to go from there. And 2.58 remaining here in the game. Tufts leading by 18 points over the Bates Bobcats. You would think at this point Bates is feeling a nice sense of urgency. And we'll look around the NESCAC here. In football, Trinity leads Williams 31 to nothing. No surprises there. Middlebury currently leads Colby 27 to seven in and the fourth quarter. As a question that was posed by your mother actually, Wesleyan is winning 43 to 21 over Hamilton. Very interesting. Uh, Bates with a, a short gain, gain really on that running play. Yeah, Wesleyan leading Hamilton 43 21. The rest of my family's over there. Oh, okay. Watching that. Is there a reason why your mom would ask what uh, she thinks we're going to do against Wesleyan this year? Yeah, we've got a little family rivalry. My parents met at Wesleyan. My brother and sister currently attend there. And I'm the lone jumbo of the family. So oh. it'll be an interesting matchup when Wesleyan comes to town. Um, the handoff is to Nickel. He breaks out flag. down the right side. And there's probably going to be a holding against Bates there which would be a very costly penalty back this far already in their own uh, territory. So the handoff to McCoy Nickel there. An illegal use of hands penalty on Bates. They bring it back. And Tufts is getting uh, heavily penalized early on in this half, but uh, they've been playing a pretty clean game ever since. The bronze statue of Jumbo over there standing tall and proud and hoping to be good luck for this second win. And quite the story in the NESCAC here. Tufts Jumbos ending a 31 game losing streak, but now starting a two game winning streak here. Maybe uh, we'll have a 31 game winning streak to cancel it out. And number 14 with the carry there for Bates. He'll be close to the first down mark and he will move the chains. And we are taking a uh, luck charm jumbo. Raising its trunk in its glory. And number 14 there with the carry was Patrick Dugan for the Bobcats. And Bates with 148 to play here is very fast at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, certainly looking at an alternative option here. Patrick Dugan taking over quarterback duties. He will throw very low on the And a very pass. close to a backward pass. That Might have been tipped there, but nonetheless, so 140 remaining. Tough still leading 18 by 18. That and indeed was a lateral. Yeah, it didn't take a bad bounce. So Patrick Dugan in the shotgun for Bates on second and 10. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, runs it himself. He is brought down for a gain of about two yards on the play. And at this point of the game, I don't quite understand why they would be running it here. They have 126 to play in this game. They're almost down by three scores. Running is not the most efficient way to go. Oh, I figure at this point they're looking to improve for the future of their offense. That probably a good theory on them. Tommy Meade with the tackle on the previous play. Dugan's pass is tipped there. Trying out the new quarterback, trying a little backup. Gonna try out the punting unit here too. So fourth down and Bates will punt it away. I think on the tough sideline there are a few hugs going on. I think they know they got this game wrapped up. And no one back to receive for Tufts. They're uh, playing the fake. So Bates will kick it away. It'll bounce to the Tufts. And takes a 32 yard line. Takes a very generous bounce for Bates down to the Tufts 14. So that's where they'll take over. Very and that punt. that very well could have been a good 50 yard, 60 yard punt there Indeed. because of that bounce. So 53 seconds remaining. 
And it looks like the Tufts Jumbos will start out the 2014 season. An impressive and pretty much out of nowhere 2-0. And 2-0, and, and they are tied for first here. Tied for first in the NESCAC. Not and you know you go to Tufts. When I was watching that punt, all I could see was projectile motion and physics. That's it. Love in there. Little physics, little one. Okay, same class. Same class, you're right. Pretty much. Yeah. And with the clock winding down here, the hugs are on the sidelines. Helmet padding, back padding. The Jumbles Fist. take another knee here with the play clock winding down. And they do take a knee. And the Tufts Jumbos move to 2 and 0. Will master Bates for a win on the season. <laughs> they win by a final score of 42 to 24 over the Bates Bobcats. Good play on words there, Matt. So you're our Victoria here at Zimmon Field. Thank you for joining us on this broadcast. Ravi Chinsky and Matt, you see Phelps signing up.